Hey everybody, Dayture the Rockstar here, and we're back from a vacation, back from a, um, a holiday week. It is Friday. Uh, typically, I put out the HBS watch list. I was off this week, as you might have known. Hopefully, you've known that, and this wasn't a surprise of the lack of coverage. But I'm, uh, I'm actually excited to be back here in the office. And it is, like I said, Friday. Coming up on normally would be the close, but the market's closed early today. And But uh, if you take a look at the chart, you see we actually closed on our highs. So a lot of things to go over. Boy, um, let's just talk about the markets in general. The Trump rally continues. I mean, there's nothing more than to say other than this is definitely an election-based Trump rally. Um, <clears throat> very, very uh, strong. We talk about uh, when, uh, when the... Um, when these candles kind of trend off of that 20 period moving average and kind of put in their own trend line. Normally you'll be jogging around that 20 period to the upside to the downside, but this case is very strong when you start to move off of that 20 period moving average and really make a, um, a strong trend off of that. And uh, you know, it's everything right now has just continued to be uh, very bullish. It's, it's, it's one of those difficult situations where you're trying, you know, to be, uh, you know, optimistic on how things are working out, but you know in the back of your mind that this probably won't last forever, and, and that there's a good possibility of a pullback in early December, and we'll go into that more and probably on a, a second video that concentrates on this because we still have a few um, a few days until then. Um, but this is a very bullish over, you know, a very bullish time of the year. The Thanksgiving week, the, um, you know, the Christmas holiday season, now we have the new presidential election, new administration, the first 100 days. So there is, you know, and this market has been very strong. So we're not here to uh, guess when it's going to pull back. Uh, right now, you know, most of the indicators are extended. But that does, but take a look at this weekly, actually. The weekly is actually very bullish here. Very, very bullish on the weekly. Again, all-time highs across the board. I do believe the monthly... Um, is up there though you know the monthly has been embedded up there and we've seen this before you know and that you know we've talked about you know the post election rally we I think the majority of the people at day training radio did expect this market to go up after everything was said and done well after the election was over with and everything kind of settled in but if we look back on that daily chart it did not take a, a one day you know one day uh, when this rally started and it hasn't looked back since so um, <clears throat> You know, the time that uh, that pullback won't be the easiest thing in the world to do, and not that we want to do it. This thing could continue to move. And like I said, I was just going to show you the monthly chart. We've had this type of situation where we got embedded on the monthly, and it was a, you know, that was a very bullish time frame here. It's like 2013, 14, and 15. And we never really even pulled back. We pulled back halfway, a little choppy, you know, 2015, 2016, very choppy and sideways. And now we're just breaking out. And this still isn't embedded. I mean, we could easily continue to rally. And I, you know, I could say it, yeah, for years. It, you know, there's no, um, you know, there's no rhyme or reason right now. But right now, things are looking pretty good. Uh, we will, you know, keep an eye on for that pullback. But uh, you know, I think it's a money-making market right now, and you actually have to be a part of it, or at least consider having the money uh, in the right spots. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. You know, where is that spot now? Before I left on vacation, you know, I put out a, a pretty in-depth. In -depth, um, watch list uh focus list to watch and again most of these stocks were based off a new administration you know the infrastructure stocks um you know things that are positive for growth here in the u.s and uh, you know and it's it's a very good list of stocks and we're going to go back because the last watch list i did on this focused these stocks so we're going to go back and see how they perform now i'm going to be looking at a lot of these with you for the first time. Remember, I was away for vacation, well, personal um, personal time down in Florida for a while, and I had no internet connection where I was. It was awful. So I didn't really even get to follow the markets except at, at the close when we got some connection and stuff. It was like I was in the jungle. Um, so, you know, I wanted to get into work today and actually do some of my research and just catch up on everything because I'm holding positions too. But, you know, I, I, I know the market was rallying. And I was able to, you know, get a hold of some of the news and stuff and watch some of the TV things, but I wasn't able to get really on online and just track everything and do charting and stuff while I was there. So, the, um, but uh, as you know, the market has been rallying. Every day has been going up and the melt up continues. That's what you're starting to hear the melt up, that term melt up. And, 
These stocks that we went over last week are great stocks. A lot of them um, probably should still be continued to be held. So we're going to go over that same list, look back, see if anything else is setting up. I actually have a, a couple new stocks here. But let's just go over this core list of stocks, which until something you know changes are going to continue to be great setups here. All right, here's IBM. I have IBM. Love IBM down here on this channel. We got it. There was a divergence set up here. There was so many things that we like in these in these in these charts, um, you know, that we follow and kind of tell us when to get in and when to get out. Especially when it comes to channel lines, reversal candles, divergences, things like that really play a big part. Uh, the hard part I always say is, you know, when to take profits. In this case, if you probably took profits back here, you might have left some on the table. But we knew that going into the uh, into this election uh, and into this holiday season, even going into the beginning of New Year, I think it's going to be more bullish than not and probably better to hold on to these a little bit longer, give them a shot. So IBM still looks really good. It's embedded on the daily. The weekly here, very strong, just like our markets, not at all-time highs. And then we have the monthly. And again, I'll probably do these for each of the stocks. The monthly, very similar to what we're seeing in our markets. Yet, we're not at the highs here. And the highs, we're at 163. The highs back here were like 215 or something. But as you can see, that monthly candle, a nice flag. Ooh, you hear that whistle? A nice flag and um, a nice little pop out of that uh, flag right there. And again, you know, just continue to hold it. I think we I think we get up to 166 on this, you know. So continue to hold that. Fast at all, we did trade this out of this pattern. This downward channel had a big divergence here. It popped. I ended up selling it on this pop right here. It has slowly grinded further up. Now we're at a kind of an area of resistance. I had it marked down here, 46 area. Again, similar situation. If things go good, uh, these some of the administration uh, initiatives go through, and who knows where this is going to go. But these are quality names, and um, you know these are worth keeping an eye on. I'm not in this. And it continues to want to do a look at it. I probably wouldn't chase it here. But it is one of those stocks that if the infrastructure play plays out, this will be a core part of it. You know, these are all the passenger, passengers, fasteners, excuse me, nuts, bolts. Um, you know, these are just key, uh, key, key uh, stuff for industrial production and, and building. As you could tell, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not a builder, but I know what they use. All right. Um, JBHT, JB Hunt. Uh, trucking, same thing. We, the last time we focused on it, and again, I want to actually go over this because this is going to be a great just a review of, you know, getting into the market. Maybe you're seeing this video for the first time and saying, I need to get back into this market. You know, I need to um, I need to take advantage of what's going on. Well, it's not always going to always going to have a great opportunity, you know. Right now, maybe is not the best opportunity to chase things, but when you see, look back at our charts, um, every chart will tell a story. It's kind of a map, and as you come to a, a certain area on the map where you could fill it fill it in, we know what to do at these points, you know. And uh, you know, it's interesting because let me see if I can zoom out here. Here's the daily. As we follow a stock down into a channel, we identify certain uh, levels like um, a one, two, three channel or an oversold stochastic. We know that we start to get into an area where we, you know, maybe we'll start to see a divergence. And here we had a divergence, this low and this higher low, and this was the low. So that's why we put that circle there. We might concentrate at one point during our trading uh, time. And then you can see the reaction off of it. And it's very simple to say, all right, our measured move on this type of move is just a rotation on the stochastics. And at that point, you wait for your next setup. And, you know, as, as you start to track a stock, you might come across areas like back here that are triggers. Here we had another um, divergence. We had a little lower low, a big reversal candle, a higher low on the stochastics. And you might say, well, John, I didn't get a lot of, I didn't get a big move. It actually just kind of went up a little and pulled back. But it did go up. And it went up enough where... Typically, we talk about if you get a fa if you get a rotation on the stochastics and it brings you back up into overbought levels, and you've only got like a point or two, and you're expecting three or four points, you have to take that point. It's you're still a winner, you know. You're still a winner here. You just have to, you know, some setups are going to give you bigger moves than others, depending on how everything lines up underneath it. And sometimes it might be a, just a 
uh, you know, it might actually be a, a bearish bounce or, you know, a bear flag where you get a nice little pullback, but the overall trend is down. And you'll typically see that reflected on the stochastics, you know, as that uh, plays out. In this case, we kind of just went sideways, it played out, and then eventually kind of popped back up. And this is the last time we've looked at this. And I think it was just because it was the Trump election. That was the election bounce, JBHT. And from that point on, all these stocks that have to do with um, building the infra infrastructure it are, are doing well. And they continue to look to do really well. Tractor Supply Company. I have some TS, TSCO. And this gap down down here, it's moved up. I, you know, it's, it's, I was a little hesitant leaving it on the table as I went to um, went away. And then I said, well, you know, I really do believe that this this is going to be a this was a, a huge opportunity down here, right down here. It sold off, um, it will bounce back up. We had the election, and we continue to move back up. It's not as bullish as some of the other uh, stocks, but this still looks pretty good. Uh, I probably will end up taking this off this week or next next week. If we get a little pop on Monday, I'll probably end up taking this off. I think I have options on that. I haven't even opened up my thing here. Hold on a second. All right, so I have three. Um, I have three January 20, 2017, 70 calls. So it's at 74. So we're doing well on that. And again, that's another situation where I have to probably end up taking that off. All right, here we have Budweiser. Uh, Budweiser picked it up on the on the move down here. Gap down. Picked it up down here. I got um, just two uh, $100 uh, 100 calls. Um, to expire on 1216. So I like that a lot. 103 now. So we're making some money on those. And again, it just it, it made a, this Budweiser here made a lot of sense. It pulled back really hard. I, I figured you can't, uh, you know, this is where you have to take advantage of quality names. A little overreaction with the election and the Mexico connection here. But um, this should move back up at least to the 20 period moving average. 105, I don't think is going to be an issue at all on this. 107, if we get 107, it's gone. You know, but I think 105 is going to be, you know, probably have a good shot of getting that early, uh, early next week. So we continue on here. I'm just going down the list with you. Let me um, see why it's not jumping over there. Oh, here we are. Here we have oh ABBV, ABV here. Started a position on this before we left, and again, it was a drug. I don't have too many drug companies. So I took a small one on this, and, uh, you know, it moved down a few days. It didn't really get any bounce, but that's the nature of the uh, the drug sometimes. The other things might be in focus, and the drugs get left behind, or if the drugs are in focus, well, then you're in luck. Um, what I have on these here, February 17, 60 calls. So, February, you know, got them right in, you know, it came down to, down to actually 58, bounce back up. We're back above 60 for February. I think this pullback is great. Um, we start to measure out a couple of trend lines. It's it's, it's kind of a sloppy uh, uh, area here. Could we gap down? There was really not much here to look at except maybe a slight divergence between this low and this low and the higher low and it held to that 20 line. We popped really good and we pulled back. We started our position on the pullback off of maybe the potential trend line here, but it wasn't really easy to read that top trend line but you can see there's a there's a reason to look at this area it's very close to this pivot this pulled back held it we came we chopped it. now it looks really good uh, and we're oversold on the daily the weekly is bullish um, again we've concentrated on this one because of the recent uh, pullbacks every time we pull back on the weekly yeah, it might chop around a little but then the overall move up here as long as we don't get overbought is going to be up same thing here until we get overbought and then it pulled back so we have some room to run here. I, I, I'm just looking for a nice little bounce. If we get back above 65, that'll be great. But you can see the logic behind this very easily. Uh, the daily chart looks great, just getting oversold. So everything here looks actually good. It really depends if some kind of weird news comes out on this, which that is, uh, you know, that's a deal breaker on all the, all accounts. Now, the REITs haven't really been playing out, you know. They have gotten back into an oversold level. Are they about to move? These are nice patterns, but interest rates can have an effect on this. They're talking about you know, the probability of an interest rate hike in December is way up there. 
and especially now with the markets ripping higher, there's even talk of a a 50 point basic uh, rate rate hike, basis point rate hike. Um, so um, you know, who knows? Who knows? That that would probably shock the market a little. But overall, you know that quarter point is probably already baked in. Um, the AVB. If that is baked in, I don't. I, I would say these are actually going to start to move up. Um, we are oversold on the daily. It's a pretty good channel. It's actually a folding wedge pattern. It's very bullish, but it is a little risky, you know, just because of the. Uh, they all have that, you know, decent patterns to the downside, but just not ready for these yet. The PSA is the same thing, just not moving. Uh, ABB and there's some other ones. The extra space storage here. This is another nice little falling wedge pattern. It looks ready to go. Just took getting oversold. So worth keeping an eye on these. Definitely. Um, there's some other ones you can refer back to last week's video on that. Now I, I did find this one. I mentioned it and I said, yeah, uh, uh, Chemors or Chemors. Chemors, a um, specialty chemi chemical company. And you know, just just shows up as a great great chart. It's twenty three dollars and sixty cents. Probably worth. You know, I'm going to start watching it. It's not. I'm going to chase it up here, but it just has been continuing to move. The recent IPO in 2015, recently broke through that 16 IPO price, and really 20 up three. Yeah, it's due for a pullback, but that pullback probably is going to be a nice buying opportunity. Definitely looks good. I just want to share it with you because I'm going to start focusing on it a little bit more. Medtronic's MDT. I wonder if I got in Medtronics. I just remember that from last week, but no. Medtronics, um, the gap down. Oh, you know what? We were focused on it because of the trend line. The gap down, and, um, you know, I guess there was some news on this. I have it on my list, but um, it looks choppy. It might be, uh, you know, it looks like maybe a possible divergence playing out here, but, you know, not really interested until it forms a better pattern. At that point, BAX, Baxter International, looks really good. Now, the market did rally for the last, uh, you know, continue to move up. If we under, if we just take a look at the SPX one more time, you can see that last five days have generally been higher, higher, higher. If we look at BAX, just a relative look at it, you know, this one chopped around a little, went up, broke down, popped back up, chopped around, staying within this bigger channel. But the channel is, is, is very bullish. I mean... It has the first has a divergence here, you know this lower low here, this low, and this lower low, and a higher low there, and just choppy. Um, but look at the overall picture on this one too. You know a rock star stock and a nice pullback. Here's your weekly, which is pointing down, and uh, you know on the uh, focus list, but. Probably not going to see me get in this one yet. Not until we get a better setup on that. SJM. Smuckers. We talked about this one because of the possible divergence here. And we look back at some of these divergences, you know that's where we want to concentrate on. Because I'm looking at a lot of these charts that we've just re reviewing from last week. And if we just look back in the history of these stocks, most of the areas that were defined as really good buy zones typically were divergences and as long as you took it off when that fast rotation that first rotation happened hey, you're sitting pretty so this is kind of one I'm not in it I, I again just reviewing it from last week APD air products and chemical gotta like this one you know going kind of another infrastructure stock um, chemicals very strong near the recent highs Hundred forty four one hundred and forty one dollars here. You might think that, hey John, you're always dealing with high price stocks. I'm I'm dealing with I'm dealing with stocks that have put together a, a nice um you know, have a, they're quality names. The quality names, they work well with some of the indicators we use. They are um they're safer, you know, they they're proven. And that's why they have they try to trade at a higher price. But you know, we also concentrate on these with options too. So there's different ways to approach these stocks. And the main things is these patterns, the patterns that play out, you know. APD, um, I like it. I, you know, I like it a lot. It would be a, a setup where you believe in it. 
and that you would want to hold it longer term. You know, if you want to trade this, then you probably want to be careful on that 60 minutes a little extended. And each time that 60 has been giving us a little pullback. But, um, you know, same situation. These stocks that have, uh, you know, kind of have this bullish infrastructure play behind it is uh, are continue to look pretty good and could continue to look good. Here is uh, Boeing, same thing. This is a, a, a series of higher highs, excuse me, higher lows on the um, on the stochastics, and that that uh, represents a longer term trend. And that once you start to identify a higher low, that's even that's that's just very bullish, meaning that that trend's probably going to continue with a rotation higher, and it's going to continue. At this point, um, Boeing probably going higher. Who do you know? You know, got recent highs way back here. 2015 highs, not that far. It's 158, it's 150. And you know what? The skies could be the limit on some of these. <laughs> CF Industries. This had a nice pop on, I think, Monday. It had a nice, nice run there and a nice follow through. Pulled back, it's chopping around. Um, this looks pretty good. I think you want to talk about a cheap one. Every time we got oversold, we had a nice buy zone on it. We focused on this one out of this wedge pattern. We got a nice trade on it. Then it chopped around sideways, and then we had a nice pop, and it seems to be holding around that 200-period moving average. You know, is this going to something that's going to turn, and we're going to start to trend up? But there's a cheap one. Looks good. Mastercard, MA, love it. And um, I noticed this one before. I was just, you know checking out some software and I just put an MA and I said oh you know what MasterCard held on to that 100 level really well it held on to that zone um, last time we got down there moved back up here consolidated around 104 now we're consolidating 104 105 I, I love this I think um, even though we're extended here a little I think MasterCard is uh, is one of the stocks that are continue to be in play and I don't think you're going to get uh, you're not going to get hurt too bad on this one. MasterCard here that hasn't broken out yet out of uh, all-time highs, but we are slowly breaking out of this channel. And uh, that would fall, these would fall under that category, even though I haven't uh, charted that one out as much and then some other ones. And then I didn't even really look at the um, banks. Oh, that's Boeing. I wanted to do BAC. The banks have been really... You know, with the banks, I like J.P. Morgan, probably one of my favorites. And then, of course, Goldman Sachs. Um, you just have to go with the big ones at this point. If you want to go with some of the, I like Capital One Finance, COF. These are all looking very good. I mean, again, <laughs> you'd rather be in this market than out, you know, instead of having it fly by you. The banks are looking really good here. Um... Security. This is one that uh, that I like. You know the mags. Mags, mags, mags. This is security. They build walls, security fences. You know, with all the talk of the wall being built, this one got some uh, Trump play on it. Popped up to six twenty-five. Actually, holding this one. Back in the, you know, when we, I think when we had the, um, when I had the terrorist uh, attack and we put a focus list on this, I picked up a couple of mags, it was one of them, and I um, have a couple hundred shares on it. So it's, it's doing really well. IRSRG. Here's one that I tried to sneak in on because it gapped down and I got in at like $686. Um, wherever this was, maybe back here. It started moving up and then it dived down, dive, dive, dive. But it's moving back up. I mean, great company. Um, da Vinci, you know, surgical, robotic surger surgery. It's it's hanging in there. Again, very, uh, very, very small, uh, very small position. So not really that concerned with, uh, you know, we're off about uh, 30 points on it, which nothing all right so yeah I have 10 shares of that so it's not much 
Um, but I, I, I do definitely expect it to get back up to that 680 level. We're holding that 200 period moving average. Uh, we'll probably get out of this channel. It's not the most exciting one down here, but it still looks okay. It's a little bit more volatile because uh, um, medical instruments uh, sometimes get affected by you know news and stuff. You can see the uh, last two channels here broke up, and overall this one continues to move higher. But not a um, not on, really on my focus right in my focus or in my crosshairs right now. I did a couple of scans. Um, ATVI here came up as a new divergence. It hasn't confirmed it yet, you know, but it does have the, the little characteristic of that. We kind of broke down and we started moving back up. We're gonna we're also kind of on an old trend line. Um, so something I'd watch. Nothing that I am really excited about. Allergen down here and um, Johnson and Johnson also came up in one of my scans which is just oversold on the daily and uh, starting to bounce off of that back up to the 200 but nothing outstanding right now nothing really new outstanding I'm going to continue to uh, take another five minutes and then and then uh, see what else we could actually pull out here for you remember Panera we got into Panera um, at $190 right down here off of this candle well probably before that candle it's just it was a perfect setup and um <laughs> i got at 193 so i think i took it off on this pop uh halfway up in that pop it was you know at the time it was a trade it was a fast one two three trade so it was a nice little trade um what should have been a swing tra it was going to be a swing trade but seeing such a good pop on that i just took advantage of it as we look back now, it's up to two hundred seventeen dollars. I really did like this pullback a lot. I left, uh, you know, I left a lot uh, on the table here. You know, I, I did all my scans. I'm back here with you, and I'm. You know, I said I we might as well touch on some of the Fang stocks because, you know, I have fell, fell fell out of love with these. You know, I used to love Facebook, but I haven't traded them in a while, and um, you know because I think the other setups have been just so much well. De better defined and they're working so well right now the Facebook and you know the, the Google yeah, I love the Am Amazon and that should be interesting to see how that plays out uh, next week week after Black Friday and this weekend but yeah, as you can see it's Facebook down pulled back the last three days um, you know this is good I think we just have to get a better setup for it you know for me to get really interested in it 60 minute time frame um, it looks like we could be setting up for a little divergence but the daily is pointed higher. Anything can happen here, you know. Really, anything can happen. Look at that one, Apple AAPL. Same thing. Nice pullback. Actually, a, a, a divergence, a rare divergence, on an Apple stock, which is really. I don't know if I mentioned this one or I mentioned the last because there was actually a couple divergences on Apple, and as you can see, I remember them because when you see a divergence on Apple, you, you gotta pay attention. Here was a great one. With that gap down and off to the races it went and got overbought and then moved sideways pulled back this was perfect everything working great here's an oversold divergence move back so you know you're kind of extended here you should be taking it off off of that divergence there was a divergence back here too and it does again rotate it back up all three divergences um really played out well on apple one here one here and here one here all of them rotated back up to overbought level slowly pulled back oversold you know went through the process over you know, divergence got overbought pulled back a little you know chopped around but the, the truth is recognizing that buy signal is it is it worth going in after you know on, on apple right now possibly you know apple has to come you know has to step up the plate sooner or later with something big um they probably you know being in the stock for that is better than not being in the stock for it so i always like the apple uh, so fa um so we went the apple um Let's take a look at Tesla, even though it's not a Fang stock. Why is my Tesla coming up T? Hmm. And here's another nice divergence. So Tesla and Apple here trading a very similar uh, connection here between Tesla and Apple, just on this latest pattern. Nice little pullback, the little divergence, and the ramp back up and getting overbought. This one not quite overbought yet. Let's take a look at um, let's take a look at Netflix. <laughs> Pulled back after the election, pushed up. Uh, yeah, again, not that excited about it. 
I'd be more excited about Netflix if over over time I find it, uh, you know, maybe back down here. Look at this perfect one, two, three channel. You know, it's one pivot, two pivot, three pivot, four pivot. It's right in the middle of that channel. Do we get down here? Do we break out? You know, so. And then, of course, Google or Alphabet. And same thing, a little pullback, pushing up, but... Um, Again, I think you got to stick with those infrastructure stocks. You got to continue to go with what the list that we're out, and we'll add some new ones to it as they set up. But these are not set up yet. Yeah, you, know, you could definitely day trade them. You, know, you could do your thing with them. You could take your shots with them. But um, you know, not falling into the criteria that normally I'm looking at, at at this point right now. And it will eventually. It will. Just that's what we have to we have to just bring the best. Bring the best. All right. Um, so that's it. That's going to be it. I'm going to work on some other things while I'm here. I want to get this out to you today so you have time to go over it over, over the weekend. Just remember, though, the market here is extremely bullish. Um, it's hard to gauge that pullback. And when it does, we have a great list of stocks here, and there's going to be other ones at, uh, lining up. But right now, everything is, you know, really extended. And that's not a bad thing. You know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing because you can feel the strength, and, you know, momentum usually brings on more momentum and, you know, this thing could go a while. You know, we're going to have our down days and stuff, but overall, these, you know, the, the, the thing we have to concern ourselves is news. You know, if that news gets out there and for some reason the media gets a hold of it, they start smelling blood and the shark starts circling and you just start to feel weird about, you know, the situation that's mostly the political situation, then maybe, you know, start looking at another hedge down the road. But uh, until then, you know, you'll be fighting, fighting a, a bull right now literally so i'm glad but again thanks for um thanks for listening today and i'll see everyone monday morning be back live on the air you know eight o'clock in the morning so see you then daytradingradio.com